What's up, saviors? GH here. Here's the part 2 of the rebalance video of November 2020. Let's do this! Okay, next class here is our Ditto. The first skill that received changes is Granata. And according to this, now we can use it two times. They slightly increase the range and the AoE attack ratio is doubled. And the skill factor is lowered. Next here is a new attribute for Granata and it's called Aim. And the change is now it's a range designated skill. Let's take a look at it in game. And as you can see, now we can select the area to attack with Granata unlike before that it's just throwing it in front of you. Next skill that received a rebalance is Tre Granata, Tri Grenade, and according to this, they changed the position of the fire pillar and changed it vertically. If I understand it correctly, now it's in a straight line, and they changed the increased number of targets from 3 to 1, increased the skill factor and duration. Here's a preview of the new Tri Grenade. In my opinion, this is way better. And here is another aim attribute, and you know what that means. It means you can throw it wherever you want. Then Taglio here got an increased number of targets. Then the attribute here increases the duration of Taglio and increases cooldown by 10 seconds. Next skill here is Invasion. And according to this, it decreases one stack of gunpowder buff and gives explosive damage. Let's test it in the game. Okay, here it is guys. Basically, when you use the skill, it also does explosive damage. And for Recupero, they changed it to a percentage heal. Nice. The previous version of Recupero was crap at best. So this is a welcome change. Next class here is the Matador class. Finally, here it is. The first change that the Matador received is Picador. It's an attribute effect change and now it inflicts 5 seconds of bleeding when attacking large and boss type monsters. Okay, uh, previously it was better because it works with everything. Hmm, this is interesting. Anyway, here's another attribute and it's for Banderillero. <laughs> and now it increases skill damage by 30% when attacking large and boss type monsters. Again, the previous version is better so I don't know about this. And then Capote, they remove the accuracy and evasion reduction and instead decreases critical resistance. It's better for PBE now. Then Moleta here. Instead of crit rate increase, now it increases damage to large boss type monsters when counter attack is successful and they reduce the level. Seems like they're making Matador into a boss fighting class, which is better cause that's how I always see Matador anyway. Then Faena here received a change in the number of hits and critical attack is applied as 50% increase rate when attacking with Faena and they increase the skill factor. Then backslide here which is basically just a step back skill and now according to this, it's an iframe now that gives a buff that increases damage received from enemies by 30%. Okay, that's much more useful now. Then Corrida Finale, the bull, it's mostly the same but with increased damage to large and boss type monsters. Then Olay, now increases minimum crit rate on large or boss type monster. Okay, that's interesting. Let's check it in game. Okay, now it increases crit rate when you use it and when attacking large or boss type enemies, your minimum crit rate is 40% at max level. This is really good. Now you don't need crit rate when you have this build because Ole is gonna handle it for you. This is an awesome change. Now Paso Doble. Invisibility is removed and skill factor is increased and that's Matador. Now it's a boss fighting class. This is gonna be awesome for sure. The Matador Fencer is gonna be in demand on raids now. Anyway, next class is Fencer. Okay, we're gonna make a build video about Fencer and Matador soon after the others. But for sure, we're gonna make one. Okay, Fencer. A new attribute is added and what it does is transfer some of the attacks of your dagger to your physical attack. Okay? Then here's a new art and it's called Parrying Dagger and it activates block when dagger is equipped and increases damage by 30% for 3 seconds when block happens. Does this mean shield is dead? Cause dagger use is probably gonna be common because of this. Shield dead confirmed. <laughs> anyway, they deleted the old art nobility, okay? And also offensive rapide. Another is also deleted and it's a skill and it's flanconade. 
okay? There better be an increase in damage and some other skills. Next skill here is Sep E-Toils. They reduce the number of hits from 8 to 7 and they increase the skill factor. Now, preparation here is change. According to this, now it blocks every attack from enemy during preparation and it can only be maintained 1 second and it increases final damage by 40% if you prepared it at max and the duration is 40 seconds and it's now level 1 only with a cooldown of 1 minute let's test it in game and yeah we can hold it to about 1 second and it gives a buff that increases final damage by 40% nice then a new art here is added it's called clean dodge and it's for toucher and what it does is evade all attacks from enemy when using toucher is this an iframe now it could be it says evade all attacks okay this is interesting more ways to protect yourself from strong attacks then toucher got an increased skill factor Balestra Fente here also got a significant damage increase, okay? Then Attack Compose can only be used 3 times and the number of hits is now 4 hits and also got a skill factor increase. Then Fletch got an increased number of hits and skill factor upgrade. Then EP Garde got nerfed with a lower final damage and no arts. Here is the skill description in the game at max level. Okay, definitely a build video for Matador and Fencer. The question there is... What is the third class? Is it Barbarian or whatever? We'll see. Then Cryomancer. The shield mastery is removed. Okay. <laughs> and then the Arts Magic Igloo. Now decreases magic damage by 30%. It's better now because in before, it's bullcrap because hardly anyone uses ice attacks except a few bosses. Ice Bolt now has a casting time. Oh no. That's always bad. But according to this, they increase the skill factor. Okay, is that enough compensation? We'll see. Next here is Ice Spike. Slightly better skill factor and effect adds when loose. What? What the heck does that mean? Anyway, tooltip is updated. <laughs> Yikes, nice rebalance. The Ice Blast here got a significant skill factor increase nearly 3 times but now we can only use it 2 times. Now the attribute for Ice Blast called Break changes the skill how it works let's just look at it in the game and as you can see now we charge it up before we can deal damage and it will deal two hits and ignore defense by 20 percent and 10 percent on pvp for snow rolling now we can cancel it okay sure snow rolling you are cancelled <laughs> for sub zero shield uh, let me summarize this to you okay uh now it's a 30 minutes buff on PvE and 30 seconds on PvP. So it's no longer annoying to use in PvE. This is a great change. There's a new attribute here that changes how Sub-Zero Shield works. And instead of damage decrease, it will now change 15% of your defense to magic attack. Okay, that seems really good. Okay, Frost Pillar here now hits stronger. But the catch here is... Now it's a skill that's needed to be casted. That's always bad. I don't like a skill that needs to be casted. Those are the changes to Cryo. And now for Necromancer. It's basically increased attack transfer rate by 15% to all summons. Then for the Bokor class here, it's the same. Increased attack transfer rate by 15% for the zombies. Then Summoner 2 increases attack transfer rate by 15% to all summons. Then Summon Familiar is changed to a damage applying method based on the caster's attack and skill factor. And okay, here's the scouts. Cloaking here, the cloaking skill is now a defensive buff. I guess that's gonna be useful for PvE. But it's a nerf on PvP for sure. And now Assassins. Hasisas is now only level 5 but with better crit damage increase. And yeah, the other stuff there is not so important. The main thing there is Hasisas is better now. Holy crap, I thought they are nerfing assassins. But it's the opposite here. We use less skill points and we get better effects. Okay. Then Behead here got a skill factor increase. And because the cloaking stuff is changed, the increased damage is removed. 
And now it hits two times with increased attack range. This is better. Because my main problem with this skill is it's too short range. Anyway, instant acceleration here got a significant damage increase. But now it doesn't get one additional hit from the agility buff. Hallucination smoke here now increases crit rate when using the skill. This is a buff for sure. Then piercing heart here now hits stronger but can only be used one time now. Okay, that balances out. And there it goes guys. The bleeding cycle increases when attacking enemy under bleeding effect is deleted. There it goes. No more assassin rank the combo. And they deleted the crit rate increase of piercing heart. And finally, Annihilation. Now has a lower cooldown. And yeah, here it is guys. The separation of Rangda and Assassin. Oh no. That was a fun build in my opinion for the majority of 2020. That was the build I was using on my other accounts. Anyway, <laughs> the Rogue class is next. And the change that it got is the first skill that received the change is not a skill. <laughs> it's an attribute and it's called Sudden Attack. And it increases the damage of dagger attacks. It no longer requires attacking an enemy from the back. Then faint here. Guys, to make it simple, faint. The damage increasing effect is changed to final damage increase. So the more debuff the enemy has, the stronger your final damage will be. Then what's next is sneak hit. Now it increases minimum critical chance when attacking enemies from behind. Halves the effect when attacking enemies in the front. Okay, very straightforward. And the good thing here is, it's now 30 minutes. Then, Lacrimator here. The duration is changed to 11 seconds and the cooldown is 30 seconds only. Then here's the attribute that gives silence, invincibility for 1 second and increases movement speed. Then here's the art. And now, it decreases cooldown by 10 seconds which will make Lacrimator a 20 seconds cooldown skill. Finally, Knife Throw here. Accuracy is 100% on targets affected by Swell Body is deleted. Okay, that's a removal of an effect, which is a nerf. <laughs> anyway, next class here is Rangda. Luka here got an increase of skill factor since it's no longer working with Piercing Heart. And here is Kutukan, got the same treatment with more skill factor. And this, if I understand it correctly, now Kepa. The Kepa effect is now separate from the damage over time. Then Rawa here, more skill factor. Then Barong, the skill, the summon, is reworked. And based on what I see, let's just test it in game. <laughs> and as you see, your rank the summon now deals damage to the enemy near it. And it's quite a large AoE. Then this attribute here is for Barong, basically increases the duration of the summon based on the Kilitihan stacks. And of course, here's an attribute to increase the damage of your Barong summon. Next class here is Corsair, and here is Pillaging. Now it reduces stamina consumption when using Corsair skills, and according to this, also movement speed. They changed it because there's no more silver around. Then Dust Devil here, now undergoes faster with larger range. Then Hexen Dropper, it's the same thing, more range and the skill time is faster now. Then Quick and Dead, same thing, more range and the skill time is faster. It basically uses faster, which is good. Then there's a new effect, it's a buff. And according to this, it increases pistol skill damage. Here it is, guys. When I use Quick and Dead, you get this buff that increases pistol damage. Then Impaled Dagger got a skill factor increase. Then Kill Hauling is now a skill that deals 4 hits and can silence enemies when they're inflicted with Iron Hook. Now Iron Hook has longer cooldown now. Okay, then some tooltip changes. Hooray! <laughs> and that's it guys, the skill rebalance of November 2020. There's a lot of things to check out and experiment with. Have fun guys and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up share and then subscribe to be part of the gaming hardcore family and as always this is gaming hardcore see you in the next one